Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to TSKI Tutorials, and this is FPS 1.22. In today's episode, we're going to learn how to create the Crouch Detection Sphere, or basically an invisible ball that floats above your head, and it's going to uh, check for collisions, or basically tell whether or not it's safe for our player to stand up from a crouching position, and whether or not there's something above our head, so that our head doesn't get stuck in the ceiling. Okay, so in previous episodes, I referred to this as the Crouch Detection Cube, and basically this because in the original prototype, I used a cube, but it didn't occur to me until later on that I should use a sphere, because a sphere or a ball is basically the exact same shape as the top of the uh, capsule collider. So I thought the collisions would be a whole lot more accurate to use a sphere instead of a cube, so last minute I changed it to a sphere instead of a cube, but the basic idea is exactly the same. So one thing about the crouch detection sphere is it's actually a solid sphere with a rigid body attached to it that floats above your head. Now this can lead to some glitches, so if we get our code wrong and our sphere floats too far down, it's going to push on the player's head and literally push your player through the ground. So we got to make sure we have everything tweaked right and make sure that this ball never actually touches the player. So the reason why I set my code up this way is that in the past I've tried experimenting and I just haven't really been able to get it. Um, for some reason, checking for collisions is something you really can't do without a rigid body. But having a rigid body attached to the, uh, attached to the sphere actually does uh, present some problems. Like I said, the sphere pushing on your head and literally pushing you through the ground. So the way this sphere works is that it's just going to be a plain sphere. We're going to turn off the renderer to make it invisible, and then we're going to attach a sphere collider and then a rigid body. And the rigid body, we're going to turn off gravity, we're going to turn off all movements, we're going to freeze all rotations and all movements to make sure it stays exactly where it is unless we specify where we want it to go. And where we do want the uh, collision sphere to go is we're going to have it equal the uh, player's X and Z position, and then we're going to calculate the Y position so it floats just right above your head. So when you crouch, it follows down with you, and it'll be able to tell you whether or not the area above your head is clear and uh, a good place to stand up. Alright, so since I have it all explained, why don't we pull up the text and actually get started and show you how to do this inside of the script. Alright, so we're going to be working with two scripts today, the player movement script and a new script called the collision detection sphere script. So the variables that we're going to be using inside of the collision detection sphere script are first of all uh, float above and this is a float variable and this is going to be the number of units of what the gap is going to be between your head and the sphere so that it just makes sure that it does not touch you. Okay, next we have the player capsule transform, and this is of type transform. So basically, we are just remembering the transform of the player capsule. Now we could do the game object and remember the game object of the player capsule, but the problem with that is that every time that we want to access the position or, well, just the position, uh, oh, and the local scale of the uh, player capsule is that we would have to do uh, player capsule dot transform dot position. Whereas we can go ahead and just create this little shortcut, and since we're just remembering the transform, all we have to do is player capsule transform dot position. Okay, and then the last variable that we're going to have is uh, collision detected, and this is going to be a boolean or a true and false variable. So this is uh, we're going to program this to go from true to false depending on whether or not it has detected a collision above our head. Okay, so here's all the code we're gonna be putting inside of the update loop. Now, the first two are actually very simple. We're just going to match our transform or the collision detection sphere of the X position and the Z position to match the X position and the Z position of the player so that it moves along horizontally with our player. And then next we'll calculate the Y or the height to make sure it floats exactly where we need it to be. So we have transform.position.x. So we're accessing the transform of the collision detection sphere, the position of the collision detection sphere, and then the X component of that position. And then we are setting it to match the player capsule transforms uh, position.x so that it sticks with it on the x-axis, 
and then the next line of code is going to do the exact same thing but with the z-axis. Okay, now this next line of code is where it gets slightly complicated. And everything that I just highlighted it is actually one line of code, but it's just kind of broken up just so that it's easier to see. Okay, so we have transform.position.y, so we're going to be setting the uh, y-axis of our transform, or where it is height-wise. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is have it match the y position of our player capsule's transform. So player capsule transform dot position dot y. So next we're going to add this big parenthesis here. Now there's actually two parts inside of this larger part. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to get the exact height of the player capsule. Now you might think we're just going to do uh, what transform dot local scale dot y. But if you've noticed, you look in the inspector, and what you see is 1, 1, 1 on the x, y, and z axis for the scale. Yet, our player is taller than it is uh, depth and wide. So to get the exact height of our player, we need to actually access the collider of the player. So in our case, we have a capsule collider attached to our player capsule. So the capsule is basically the shape of a pill capsule. And then when we access that collider here, and then get dot height, dot height is going to give us the exact height of that capsule, including the rounded edges at the top. So from very bottom to very top, this is how tall the player is going to be. So to access that, we have player capsule transform dot get component collider dot height. So here, this whole thing is the transform of the player capsule. And then we're going to do dot get component, and we're just going to get the component collider, and then just access the height out of that. So this little set of code right here would be perfect on its own to get the exact height of the player if our player's scale was always set to one. The only problem is that when this variable is returned to us, it isn't or it is scaled by the uh, height or the local scale of the player. So to balance this out and to actually get the exact height of our player, we're going to multiply this number by the y scale of our player, or player capsule transform dot local scale dot y. So we have in here the height of the player capsule multiplied by the local y axis scale of our player capsule. So basically when we take these two parts here and we multiply them together, now we have the actual physical height of our player from very bottom to very top, including the rounded edges of the top and bottom of the capsule. Um, no matter whether or not we're crouching or standing, this is going to be the exact height of our player. Okay, so for the player capsule and its position, the position is actually going to be measured from the very center of the player capsule. So when we add half of the height, the actual physical height of the player, when we add half of that to the center of the capsule, the center height position, what we're going to end up with is the position of the very top of the player capsule, like in the very center, very top of its head. So if we were to just leave this whole highlighted part as it is and just move the player sphere, uh, or I mean not the player sphere, move the collision detection sphere to this position or this Y position that we just uh, figured out, we do ha still have a problem is that the position of the, uh, what do I call it, the collision detection sphere is also measured from the very center of that sphere. So that sphere is going to be floating around your head and we can't have the sphere colliding with the player. So the next thing we need to do is add half of the height of that sphere so that, that sphere moves halfway up so that the very bottom of the sphere now matches the very top of your head. So basically we're going to do transform or the transform of the collision detection sphere dot local scale dot y divided by 2. Alright so now we almost have the y position exactly in place where we need it. But right now we have the sphere and the very top of the head just barely touching. They're so close together that the physics engine is actually going to consider them touching. So what we need to do is add the variable flow above. So we can make this number like 0 0.01, 0 0.05, but we're just going to adjust it until the sphere is very close to the head but not touching so that we get no glitches. 
So basically all this code here is going to make the sphere follow the player and stick right above its head. Now that we have the sphere floating above the player's head and following it and being exactly where it needs to be, now we need to check for collisions. So this is a lot like the collisions that we had when we were checking for jumping. Uh, so basically we're just going to do function on collision stay. So on collision stay, when it enters a col collision and stays in it, this is going to return true every frame that that collision stays inside, or that, that, that the two colliders stay inside of each other. And then we have in here variable collision of type collision. So basically collision is a class and this gives us back a bunch of different bits of information that we can access about the collision that happens and we're going to save it inside of a variable called collision. So we have if collision dot transform dot tag equals level parts. So here's the collision or here's the collision variable that returns us all the information about the collision that just happened. So we're going to access the transform of the game object that we collided with and then we can access the tag from that transform and see if we're actually colliding with a level part as opposed to an enemy or a weapon or something that really doesn't matter. We really just want to check for the level or like ceilings or just stuff that we can collide with and get stuck in. So if that's true, if we are colliding with a level part we're going to set the variable collision detected to true. And next we have down here function on collision exit. So as we leave any collision, uh, we're just going to set collision detected to false. So that means if we're colliding with more than one thing, if it leaves one collision, it's going to set collision detected to false. But because on collision uh, stay, returns or is executed every frame that that collision is still there. If we have more than one collision and we leave one collision and we're still staying inside of one collision, it's going to return true again and it's going to leave the variable collision detected as true. Okay, so that's everything that we need to write the uh, sphere collection or sphere detection sphere, oh, what did I call it? The collision sphere, the collision detection sphere script. So that's everything we need to make the Collision Detection Sphere script. So now let's move on to how we're going to be modifying the player movement script. Now the only variable that we need is the Crouch Detection Sphere, and that is of type Game Object. So basically this is just a drag and drop sort of thing in the inspector. We're going to drag and drop the sphere onto this so that we can quickly access this sphere and uh, know where to get the information. Okay, so here we're going to be modifying the if statement that tests whether or not we are not holding on the shift key. So if we're not holding on the shift key, stand up. But not in every case do we want to stand up if we're not holding on the shift key. For instance, if there's a ceiling above our head, we don't want to stand up through that ceiling. So we need to test um, whether or not the variable that we defined inside of the collision detection sphere script is, uh, or the variable collision detected is true or false. So if it's false, that means this area above our head is free of collision, so it is safe to stand up. So we have if input dot get button crouch equals false. So if we're not holding on the shift key, and crouch detection sphere dot get component collision detection sphere script dot uh, collision detected equals false. So here, it, right here, is the variable that we defined in the inspector that uh, basically just remembers the game object that is the collision detection sphere. And we are getting the component collision detection sphere script from that, and we're going to access the variable collision detected from that. And if it equals false, that means the area above our head is clear, so that means it's safe to stand up. So if we're not holding down shift and the area above our head is clear, it is safe to stand up, so let's stand up. All right, so that is everything that you need to know on how to make a collision detection sphere float above your head and make sure your head doesn't go through the ceiling. So I'm gonna cut the green screen and go into Unity and show you how to do that inside of Unity. All right, here we are inside of Unity and I wanna show you one quick thing that I actually found out that looks pretty cool in the game. And I uh, just messed around with some variables, and I made it so now the gun looks more like it's leading the camera. So when you turn, the gun moves first. And I think it looks pretty cool. Kind of reminds me of Crisis, and it actually does have some advantages. 
So the camera itself is moving slower and more smoothly, um, and the gun is moving faster and more accurately than the camera. So now we can move our gun and we can get accurate movements with the gun, but still have a smooth look to the camera and make it feel more natural. So let me show you how I did that. So go to the main camera, and under Look Smooth Damp, I have it set to 0.2. And under the Game Object, I have Rotate Speed set to 0.11. So since uh, um, this is a smooth damp function, and it's the approximate number of seconds it's going to take for that variable to reach its target, uh, and the gun has a smaller number than the main camera, the gun is actually going to move faster than the camera, which gives uh, this effect that I just showed you. So I thought that was pretty cool and worth pointing out. Uh, so let's get on with the actual tutorial. So first of all, let's uh, create a sphere. So game object, create other sphere, and I'm just going to drag it above the player's head. And that's where we want the sphere to go but it doesn't actually matter if we, uh, I mean, we can put this anywhere, really, anywhere that we want, and it's still going to, uh, the script is going to place it where we need it to be. So I'm just sticking it above the player's head just for organizational purposes. So it really doesn't matter where in the scene you stick the sphere. And let's rename this Collision Detection Sphere. And let's add a rigid body to it so that it can now uh, detect collisions. But we don't want it, be, it to be a rigid body that's going to be bouncing around the level. So let's turn off gravity and let's freeze the position and rotation. All right. And now let's create a uh, new JavaScript. And let's call it Collision Detection script. All right, cool. And let's get rid of that junk there. And let's start listing off our variables. And the first one is float above. And this is of type float. And let's ballpark that at 0 0.1. And next we have our player capsule transform um, and that is going to be of type transform and var uh, collision detected and this is going to be a boolean and let's have that equal false you definitely want to make sure that you set this variable to false in the beginning because uh, if it's not set to false it will by default be set to true and if it's set to true in the very beginning of the game um, the variable collision detected will only be changed to false if it leaves a collision so in the very beginning if it doesn't uh, collide with anything it has no collision to leave so it has nothing to set it to false so in the very beginning if this was set to true then you would crouch and you wouldn't be able to stand up until you actually walk under something so that would be a glitch, so let's definitely make sure that by default we have it set to false. And I'm going to do one thing before I forget, just to make sure that we don't set collision detected to true at any time, I'm going to hide this in the inspector. Alright, so first of all, transform.position dot x equals player capsule transform oops oops position dot x and I'm gonna be lazy and I'm gonna copy and paste that and I'm gonna change the x's to z's There we go. And I'm going to paste that one more time. And I'm going to change the X's to Y's. 
And now let's add the code that we need. So first of all, inside of uh, two sets of parentheses, um, we are going to have player capsule transform dot get component collider and make sure you set that to capital or that you capitalize the word collider dot height and uh, we're going to multiply that by the player capsule transform dot local scale dot y and we're going to divide all of that by two so let's just go over that real quick this is the height of the collider unmodified by the scale of the player and then here is the scale of the player and we're multiplying those two together to get the actual physical size or physical height of the player and then this whole thing right here gives us exactly one half of how tall the player is going to be so when we add that to the y position of the player remember this is the very center of the player so when we add this now we are at the very top of the head of the player so now we need to add um, inside of parentheses trans whoops form dot local scale dot y divided by two so we need half of the scale or or half of how tall the sphere is so now the very bottom of the sphere uh, is touching the very top of the player capsule and now let's add the variable float above so that it just floats a little bit above it and never actually touches the player all right so that is all the code that we need inside of the update function now wait func shun on collision stay Okay, so function on collision stay is called every time our collider collides with another collider and uh, we get back a variable of type collision that gives us a bunch of different information about the collision and we're gonna save that inside of a variable called collision. So pay close attention to the lowercase and capitalization of this word because the capitalization means the class and lowercase means it's a variable so we actually could name this word anything that we want but just for the sake of simplicity we're going to just call it collision so now let's test to see if we're colliding with part of the level and so if collision uh, dot transform dot tag equals le oops, level parts then we are going to set collision detected to true all right cool so now let's do function on exit and we don't actually need to access any information from on collision exit we don't need to know anything about the collision that happened we just need to know if a collision was ended so we can go ahead and skip adding anything inside of those parentheses so in, uh, when we exit a collision let's set collision D oops Oh, I just realized that I have a spelling error. Let me fix that real quick. Detected. Let me make sure I have all three of these spelled right. Yeah, it looks like they're all spelled right. 
I'll get some errors back if they are not spelled right, so then I will know. Equal false. Alright, so if we exit one collision and we're still colliding with more than one object, since this is called every frame, um, if this is set to false and we're still inside of another collision that is that has the tag level parts, it's going to set it right back to true. So that is how that all is going to work, and that is the collision detection script. Now let's modify the player movement script. Now the first thing we need is a variable that is going to save the game object of the collision detection sphere. So, col collision detection sphere. Game object. So we're going to, uh, in the inspector, set that to the game object of the collision detection sphere. All right. And now let's just modify this if statement here. So this if statement says that if we are not holding down shift, we're going to smooth damp current crouch ratio to 1 because 1 is standing. So now let's set it to if we are not holding down shift and uh, the area above our head is free of collisions. So uh, collision detection sphere dot get components. Colli right. yeah, collision detection sphere script dot colli collision detected oops, equals false. So here is the collision detection sphere, the game object itself. Uh, and then we're going to get the component, the collision detection sphere script and we're pulling out the variable collision detected to know whether or not there is a collision above our head and if there is not a collision above our head then go ahead and stand up so that is all the code we need and now we need to do a little bit of modification inside of the inspector so first of all let's add the collision detection sphere script to the actual collision detection sphere and where are the variables How come the variables aren't showing up? Maybe it has something to do with this. Let me comment that out real quick. Oh. Function on collision stay. What did that error say? Collision. Oh, I spelled collision wrong. That is the problem. I need an I right there. There we go. Now let's see if that all works. Okay, no errors. And now my variables are showing up. So great. So yeah, all right. So collision detection or collision detected. I did not want to open up Blender. My bad. Okay, let's uncomment this. There we go. So the, the variable collision detection or detected is hidden and now it should hide itself. Great. Now let's take the transform of the player capsule and we can just drag and drop the game object from the hierarchy and just drag and drop it right on top of that empty space where it says none inside of the variable or we can click on the circle and actually find it in the list. So now that we have that all set let's go to the player capsule and the collision detection sphere let's drag and drop that on top of there and let's give this game a little test run and see if it works. So we can still see the sphere. We're going to have to fix that. And let's see. All right. So we can walk under this. And I, I am now let go, letting go of shift. My hand is not touching the keyboard. And I am not standing up. And I can still move freely around under this thing. So when I walk out of this, I will stand up. And I did and now I have to press shift to go back under it so it looks like our script is working cool let's uh let's just go ahead and watch it um, trying to remember my shortcut keys there we go alright let's watch it inside of the scene view so that we can just get a better view of that and how it all works so crouching letting go of shift I can still uncrouch then I walk when I'm under it, and now the sphere 
is colliding with this cube that is above my head and I just let go of shift and I am not standing up. So now when I walk forward and walk out from under this thing, I stand up. So cool. That has been the tutorial. Oh, actually we need to do one last thing and that is to turn the renderer off. But actually I need to go out of play mode so that that actually saves that I turn the renderer off. So yes, this has been the tutorial on how to make a collision detection sphere um, so that our head does not go through the ceiling. So I hope you enjoyed it, and until my next episode, I will see you guys later. Keep making games. All right, guys, before I go, I just want to point out one thing that is fairly important and could, could cause a few glitches. All right, so let me get the player capsule closer to the camera so that you can see this. All right, so you can see the player capsule has two green lines right here. And when I crouch, those green lines get closer together. All right, so the player capsule is made up of three parts, the top half sphere, the bottom half sphere, and this middle cylinder right here. So let me show you what happens if I set the crouch ratio to something smaller like 0.2. All right, let's play. And let me get closer to the camera again. Okay, so now when I crouch, you can see my uh, capsule itself has gotten really small, but the capsule collider, this green outline, can only get as, uh, as short as it is uh, wide and uh, its depth. So the X and Z axis of the scale, um, it can't get any shorter than how wide or the depth that it is. So um, now you can see that messes with the equation and now our uh, collision detection sphere is intersecting with the uh, capsule collider and if I try to move I can't. I'm pressing WSAD right now and I'm not moving anywhere. So that is just one thing to point out. So what one way that you can um, avoid this is to um, just keep on adjusting your crouch ratio. I found 0.6 to be my favorite spot, maybe 0.5 would work, but you just need to go back and forth and just keep on crouching and just make sure, like, okay, right now those lines are touching each other, so let's try again and let's do 0.55. Let's see if we can get these lines very close together but not quite touching. There we go, 0.55 is good. All right, so they aren't quite touching and that is what we want. We don't want it to get any shorter than that because we want the uh, capsule collider to be the exact size and shape of the actual capsule. So if our capsule or the scale gets smaller than that, the capsule collider can only get so small that it turns into a perfect sphere. So just keep an eye on that and just make sure that uh, I mean, just make sure that your uh, capsule doesn't get any smaller than that. Otherwise, you're going to get the issue of the sphere going through your head and you won't be able to move. So, yep, just wanted to point that out. Make sure it still works. I let go of crouch. I'm under it. Move out from under it. I stand up. All right, cool. So, it's working. All right, well, this has been Hisuke Tutorials. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Keep making games.